uh, we are live and thank god we are live fambulem this na saiku john barry they come to na live from the uk and this na then and now the media empire we did for giving our information especially about current affairs na sierra leone and today we get big, big personality but we can to una but before that we will up at the ask una for me kuna share the, the links to as many people as we can and this na then and now and this na cycle john barry stay tuned stay connected Okay, uh, Fambulem again, uh, once more. This is Saiku John Barry, the canton live from the UK. Today we get somebody, one personality, we na a big somebody, we at least, you know, an officer need that introduction because almost everybody sabi am and a bossing we don't deny the limelight, they do things them for Sierra Leone and through the university. But we would like for make introduce himself. Good evening, sir. Then we will want for you introduce yourself. Good evening, sir. Um, James Tambalebi, um, the, the, the lecturer at the Froby College, the Faculty of Communications, Department of Public Relations and Communications. And then me not the top man for the the purported University of Sierra Leone courts. Um, until recently, um, I've been the function as the director of public relations for the University of Sierra Leone, but the Ministry of Education don't direct that then terminates me contract, which another problem with. Uh, but I continue for speak for the university courts. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Levy. And again, I just want to remind uh, Sierra Leoneans, we are ever going to watch this program. Again, this is a cycle, John Barry. This is now, 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 man. People have been long, uh, have been disappeared for a while. I've been guess so many issues that when they go on, especially we have been lost, my sister, we didn't kill na Kabala. So all that thing in the, and other issues we make, but I am back. And this is the dinner now. And Mr. Levy, we see before then terminate your contact. We'll get for go into that. But what in actually the go on at the University of Sierra Leone? Yeah, um, there's a shameful standoff. Shameful because uh, it we're not really supposed for this our day. But there's a standoff between the University of Sierra Leone courts and the supervisory ministry, where now the Ministry of Technical and Higher Education. And the standoff emanates from the rights of a point for a point. So now one action I spark the standoff, but before I give, I give a chronology of events, it was very important to provide the context and a background to the crisis. Okay. And by way of context, mm -hmm. the, briefly, the University of Sierra Leone, now the now act of parliament, now establish them. So the 2005 Act, nine split Jala University, Jala University College from University of Sierra Leone, nine made Jala a standalone university. Between 2005 to 2018, series of amendments that may not take place. But in 2021, the 2005 Act was repealed and replaced by the 2021 Universities Act. And that bring about a major paradigm shift and what him bring about the paradigm shift now that in 2018, the president, the candidate of the SLPP, the presidential candidate, now president of the Republic, uh, President Julius Madabio, a campaign, one of him campaign manifesto promised now that a whole education in high esteem and that too much interference beyond the in the running of the universities, public universities, and in the frown at that. And so if elected into office, they divorce the position of the chancellor 
from that of the, the, the president of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. Because in the 2005 Act, the president of the Republic, now the chancellor of all public universities, and now the yeah. award degrees, he say, you know, one that he go divorce him. And true to a world way win in 2018, he divorced the position of the president from that of the chancellor. So now I bring about the 2021 Universities Act. So in, in place, it appoints chancellors for all public universities. Then the act transfer the powers of the president when the chancellor trade to the new chancellor. Then. Among them powers then they now the power for appoint. This is the background. So now we are ruled, universities are ruled by a new legal instrument. We don't inside which the president is now a visitor is no longer the chancellor you understand eh? so inside mm -hmm. the old act because the president abused the person there was a position called the pro chancellor now, i mean they take actions on behalf of the president together with the supervisory ministry with the ministry of education the name keeps changing depending on which government in a power but all i call a ministry of education for now mm -hmm. a ministry of higher education yeah now the court, the university court, the university don't become an autonomous body. The courts are the highest administrative decision-making body. And the chairman of the court, nine are the chancellor of the university. And for the university of Sierra Leone, now Dr. Amfa Koroma, we are the CEO for Union Trust Bank. Nine are the chancellor. And nine are the, nine are the chairman of the court. And that court, they are the highest administrative body. The highest academic body of the university now the Senate, then you're in charge of academic business, whilst mm. we employ them administrative business, now the courts, including appointments. So on the 11th of December, the ministry appoints somebody who don't retire from the university system as acting vice chancellor and principal. This come about when the sitting or the, the, the then vice chancellor and principal, the president will yeah. get another appointment as the executive director of the national, a new entity, the National Public Health Agency. Mm -hmm. But it's a new entity where it not started, then just don't appoint the man, they not inaugurate, they not formally launch the agency. Yet. So mm -hmm. what's it happen? It's not going to sign for go. It's been there as vice chancellor and principal. It is prepare yeah. a hand in over notes. Now in the ministry, say then as far as them concerned, the moment parliament don't approve that man for the new position, vacancy not in at the university. But in actual fact, the man had not handed over, he didn't have an office. Now, this 2021 Universities Act, mm -hmm. post one to section nine, it made provision for a pro vice chancellor. Mm -hmm. Two things. For let it be a pro vice chancellor, you get for be a sitting deputy vice chancellor. The deputy vice chancellor, now the head of the constituent colleges, them under the University of Sierra Leone. So from the, the head of Robe College, now deputy vice chancellor. The head of Comas, now deputy vice chancellor. The head of IPAM, now deputy vice chancellor. The law say now one of them three people and they nine them for appoint for be an act pro vice chancellor. Now, what's in the, the role of this pro vice chancellor? They are standby person. So, whenever the head of the university, the academic head of the university, whether the vice chancellor and principal, whether he travel, whether he go on leave, whether he get appointments, this person now they occupy a space tentatively until the university court and the TEC, the Tertiary Education Commission, put together oh. what's in and call a search committee. And that search committee, they now go look for somebody with eligible and competent and qualified for hold the position of vice chancellor and principal on a permanent basis. But whilst the search committee, they do that job, somebody has to step in to act as vice chancellor and principal. And the nomenclature, the legal nomenclature for that, now pro vice chancellor. So already it exists. And mm -hmm. there was an arrangement at the university say the position for the rotational. The rotational direction is now from the college it starts after that it go to comas then after that it go to ipam from the college we don't serve this position mm. then don't done now now the turn of ipam so whilst 
now the turn of IPAM now, forget this pro vice chancellor, now we can't get this vacancy. So as per law, the DVC of Comas, Professor Mohamed Samai, where mm. now the pro vice chancellor, now if we act as vice chancellor and principal until the search committee gets the substantive holder, the ministry say they not agree, then go appoint somebody, then come, then say in the field. Now it creates this whole crisis. Now, when the appointment was done, mm -hmm. the one way they imagine the one the man in the office, he not go it now the new job, then don't appoint somebody. So what he do, he hand over on the 13th, he move, he move on. The court summoned on the 18th of December for mm -hmm. look at waiting not happen. Then come they reach a determination that it is not correct for the ministry for appoint somebody because already somebody is there as the pro vice chancellor and by extension mm. and by implication are the acting vice chancellor and principal so in all yeah. right for let the ministry appoint then put together a team for engage the ministry with the hope that they will see reason and back down they're not back down in fact then write a position letter and make mm. two arguments in that letter argument one then say there was a vacancy so they move for fill the vacancy Argument two, then say there is no minute where Professor Mohamed Samai, the deputy vice chancellor of commerce, was mm -hmm. officially appointed as pro vice chancellor. So he is not legally seated. Therefore, mm -hmm. then I by the same argument, then go appoint somebody for fill the vacancy. The counter argument by the university court is that mm -hmm. there is no vacancy. Because somebody else, somebody read this standby for fill that, that void in the law. And the law make them very clear that not to anybody they fill that void day tentatively. Mm. You have to be a sitting deputy vice chancellor from among the three constituent colleges by the act and by the university policy, HR policy, you have to be below the age of 65. Because the university HR policy, they say, up to the age of 65, you can hold an administrative position at the university. Above 65, you can continue to be an academic, but you cannot hold administrative position. Now, this man wouldn't go appoint. He don't mm. pass 70 years, number one. So you're not eligible. Okay. Number two, mm. now a former deputy vice chancellor. So you're not eligible. So let's even agree that... Let's agree without conceding that Professor Mohamed Sama is not legally seated, as soon as mm. argue. What in the ministry go do is to undertake an illegal appointment for can rectify illegality as per the argument. So we yeah. say that is not right. It feels that Professor Mohamed Sama is not... In fact, what happened? On the 16th of January, the court sits and finally officially appoint Professor Mohamed Sama on the 16th. Check the records, do your investigations. The ministry still say they're not they acknowledge or even recognize that appointment day. The law now tell you, say, you for don't do this appointment by this time. It's not time bound. So, what it happened was an understanding. Granted, yes, there was no formal appointment, but he said, no, in law, if a practice don't happen over a period of time, they're acceptable to the parties. Illegal, not legal, something that is acceptable. So, because mm -hmm. this practice be not there within the university for long on a rotational basis, document not be there. However, the the pro vice chancellor now alternate signatory to all university accounts. It is approved documents. It is approved check. It is signed. So, which means it don't act. Evidence they say it don't act as pro vice chancellor. It don't pay salaries. It don't it don't approve payments. So you cannot say it's illegal. Mm -hmm. But let's even agree it's illegal. They don't go now and then don't write the wrong. They don't formally ratify them. The ministry still say they're not going to recognize that. Instead, instead of them go now say, okay, we're not going to recognize this man, but we have two options more. The head of Ruby College and the head of IPAM then they, they are deputy vice chancellor. They not take none of them. They go appoint a retired person. Somebody don't retire from the university. And somebody will don't retire, not to not to sit in deputy vice chancellor. So by argument, you are also illegal. Your action is also illegal. You cannot correct illegality by your argument with another illegality. Second, the power to appoint 
is that of the court. It's not of the ministry. So let's even agree there is a vacancy. Okay. Uh, and me, the interesting okay. thing is Mr. That Levy, I want before I want you hold the first thing. Uh, before you go further, because I want to we get uh, clarifications as well. Uh, I've been the I've been the look at this okay. uh, university act. Uh, wait and say the Eight president. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been the look at. Yeah, I've been. The, I just want for little we throw light more on Woodard for a point. Uh, now. I see now, one side way yes. uh, at section seven, subsection one, where they say the president shall, on the advice of the minister, appoint a Sierra Leonean with a proven record of high moral rectitude, integrity, sound academic academic background, etc. etc. Uh, as a university chancellor and head of the university for a term of three years, and shall be eligible for reappointment uh -huh. for a further term of three years so uh now this not on the basis where they mention the president in name and they say on the advice of the of the minister is it not on this basis the minister make this appointment no now what is mm -hmm. important to note mm -hmm. is that all the reference to the ministry and the minister and the act it's mm -hmm. up to advisory role all so in fact the body actual uh the um, provision mm -hmm. where give the power to to the court and the chancellor for appoints mm -hmm. that's section eight and section nine okay do you understand mm -hmm. so for the substantive position for mm -hmm. the substantive position of vice chancellor and principal now the mm -hmm. chancellor the appointer section eight subsection one mm -hmm. a quote i know the paraphrase at the quote okay. verbatim Okay. A university shall have a vice chancellor and principal who shall be a person of high academic and administrative distinction and of mm -hmm. the rank of a university professor with proven managerial skills and ability to mobilize and generate resources of the for the university. You don't mm -hmm. understand? You don't say mm -hmm. okay. Then are, then are the qualification. You don't understand. Where you mm -hmm. go section two, subsection mm -hmm. two, section eight, subsection two, a vice chancellor mm -hmm. and principal under subsection one shall be appointed by the chancellor on the advice of the minister on such terms and conditions as the court may determine. So the power, not the chancellor, but the minister, mm -hmm. the advice. In fact, they explain how the minister, the advice. Mm -hmm. Minister for the, the substantive position will now the okay. will not mm -hmm. come to the temporal position. Mm -hmm. Now, subsection three of, of, se of section eight, they say, the mm -hmm. advice of the minister under subsection two shall be based mm -hmm. on a recommendation of a joint search committee of the court and the commission. So the university court and the tertiary education committee, then they put together a search committee for look for somebody who is qualified and competent for the vice chancellor and principal. With a non shortlist, then they report to the minister. Then the minister now, on the basis of the recommendation of that search committee, they advise the chancellor. But at the end of the day, the box stops at the chancellor. The chancellor, now in the appoint. I read that again. A vice mm -hmm. chancellor and principal under subsection one shall be appointed by the chancellor on the advice okay. of the minister. So Mr. So Mr. Mr. Levy, our Mr. Levy, Mr. Levy, okay, finish. This now for the substantive position. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, when you come to Usa Ude right now, mm -hmm. now the tentative holder of the position. Okay. Did you get me? Yes. In a section nine, nine speak to that. Section nine, subsection one of the Universities Act. It says a university shall have a pro vice chancellor who shall be appointed by the courts from among deputy vice chancellors of the university. So it make them very clear that if they get vice chancellor appointed by the chancellor, mm -hmm. then if they get pro vice chancellor appointed by the court, and the chancellor and the chairman of the court, at no point did the act, the law, the governing instrument say 
appointed by the ministry. So with the ministry, they say there is a vacancy and I make them fill up. So let's even agree without conceding that there is a vacancy. It is not the business of the ministry to fill the vacancy. And interestingly, the ministry gets representatives in the courts. If they don't get an agenda, if they don't get something up their sleeve, if they, do a, in, they want to do something in good faith, what they should have done is to re remind the courts where they have representatives. That's one, by their arguments, there is a, there is a, there is a vacancy on a move for fill the vacancy. And or this man who has seen a pro vice chancellor, he is not properly seated, he's not legally seated on a legalizer. This time they say acting in good faith. But what they do, they avoid all that day, then go and go appoint. And they keep insisting that they have the right to appoint. And the court say, no, you don't have the right to appoint. Now, then I bring the draw draw. And when the ministry insists on appointing, the court resists. The next thing they do, the ministry say it don't dissolve the university court. Yeah. Now, here is the funny thing. The head of the university court, now the chancellor appointed by the president. Mm -hmm. The head of the ministry will say he dissolved the court, now a minister appointed by the president. Mm -hmm. Who said you don't agree a presidential appointee? They sack another presidential appointee. Where, where, who said this don't happen at the wall? Now, president appoints one or two. And the court is established by an act of parliament. So, so who said them pull that two power? Two. That is the question. Then say, now the TC recommend. Now we say, eh? the TC re recommend, just recommendation. When you read the letter, now four page letter, mm -hmm. who said then say there are lapses in the university? Who know they argue that they let's agree say there are lapses. No public institution, not in a salon, we don't get lapses. What do you for do? Now, for help for strengthening those lapses. That is your business as a supervisory ministry, where you have good faith. Now, for support the courts and strengthen the work of the courts. But you say they go dissolve the courts. Where do you derive that power from? Then send a recommendation by the TEC. They not make no reference to any legal instrument where give them the power. That nine are the laughable team. And the buffoonery where underpin the recommendation by the TEC is this. The TEC sides precedents them, all, all precedents them, in which they say that we don't dissolve courts before. But what they fail to realize is that now be under the old law when the president was chancellor. That precedent don't terminate when we get this new law because in this new law, the president is no longer the chancellor. How can you bring an obsolete precedent and can apply in under a new regime. It's so laughable. It's so disgraceful. But as I say, na personal agenda, na vendetta, na personal interest. Somebody they use in office, they are abusing office for fight a personal agenda. Because if this is not a personal agenda, they tell me when I say the man is not properly seated, the court go and rectify the wrong, then appoint the man formally. You still say you know the recognizer. Here is another interesting point. The man where they appoint illegally, he don't resign. He don't yes. he, he say no mix again. Even when he don't resign, they still not concede, say the court don't appoint somebody for rule. Now they say they go appoint international person for carry on the university. And that is an insult on the collective intelligence of the university community. The university get qualified, competent professors. How you go go left them? You say they go count international person. So this, this international person, this, uh -huh. this international yeah, person man. will be a Sierra Leonean or no, not? Will I say an international person, not a Sierra Leonean, and they go count international scholar. But here is the thing. Here yeah. is the laughable thing. Professor Samai, nine the ministry no want. And I make her say this is personal. Because if you're not personal, they tell when I say the man not legally sitting, as I say, don't go courts don't go rectify him before when I say when I don't dissolve the court. But when I still say when I don't want him. This man, he don't resign. Still when I don't want Professor Samai. What's when I want again? 
We don't tell them, say, okay, if we don't have Professor Samai, there is the head of Robey College, there is the head of IPAM. When I take one person, they, because then the law say qualify. But they're not doing And because they, you know the reason why they're not doing them, no. if they intend somebody else within the university, they left Samai, and they expose them, saying that Professor Samai, they're not want. So what they do, then throw the baby with the bathwater, then cut their nose for spite their face. So as we stand now, the university is without a vice chancellor and principal. Then as they come, they say they don't dissolve the court, then send the registrar on leave, then send the finance director on leave, then terminate me contract as director of PR. So they don't transform the imagine you know, people away there, as you say, the courts they act illegally. Now they don't transform the university as a unit of the ministry. In fact, to me, this is a coup against the University of Sierra Leone. It just seems like when military take over, then suspend the constitution, then they act by decree so so what is the ministry has done they're not this man they don't deserve that to them they don't dissolve the courts they don't ignore the university's act now they go and pick a committee they say they can't run the university by committee that is a junta attitude that is a junta yes. mentality so also who said, them pull, against the who, said them, who said them pull power now the power again for cancer kuna all what in the, the law, the law they, they not just abuse now then they behave ultra varies they are this is an extrajudicial measure they are exercising powers they don't have this is how the junta operates now make the tell you who against the university now junta mentality they don't have the powers they don't discard the university's act they're not this then they sack people and send them on they are just behaving arbitrarily even the day for yesterday they send me after i don't terminate my contract I still continue for talk for the university courts, then query me back just for silence me. But I told them, you cannot silence me. You cannot. This freedom of expression is guaranteed by the constitution of Sierra Leone and countless other human rights instruments. You cannot silence me. This is my freedom to talk and I will continue to talk to hell with if they wanted to take the job. So be it. But you cannot intimidate me. Okay, Mr. Lebi, thank you so much. And fumble them again. Uh, this is James Tamba Lebi, uh, again, na a senior lecturer now for Bay College or uni the University of Sierra Leone. And I've been the uh, public relation, not so until recently. We una all the area, no need for repeat again. We, well, the ministry then arbitrarily say they don't pull the job in my hand because it is talk. Of waiting in field say based on the law, fee say no rights and then for follow the legal and the right procedures. So now that make them the sacam. So today we we'll get them with we now then and now. And as we now always know, the then and now we therefore bring issues them of national concern because this waiting the go on uh, Sierra Leone and at uh, the University of Sierra Leone, like it, it really like na a cause for concern because. We university they now more or less they not get like they not get more the structures the way for on the university now then the, more or less they don't jeopardize them because the university court they don't disband them now they not get a uh, chancellor and then thing and day so issues then they we we'll not get chancellor we we'll not get vice chancellor we we'll not get chancellor vice chancellor and now it's like the well the ministry or if you want you call and the government because if because but we get for come to that, then they interfere with the running of the university. But would they come, would they go for a short break? Would they come back after this short break? Tame accountants specialize in providing a wide range of accountancy, tax and business advisory services to small and medium-sized businesses as well as individuals and private clients. We operate as an extension of your internal staff, giving you maximum flexibility by allowing you to rely on us for any of the services that we offer. Our valued clients include Startups, charting their course to success Sole traders, making their mark in the world of business Self-employed individuals, paving their own way Partnerships, building stronger futures Limited companies, ensuring financial stability. Contractors, securing their financial future. CIS contractors, finding financial clarity. 
subcontractors, thriving with our expertise. Landlords, making property management a breeze. Those looking to sell their business, unlocking potential profits. Employed individuals, finding financial peace of mind. Even hairdressers, managing their unique financial challenges. We are open, approachable, and friendly, the perfect choice for small businesses like yours. Our dedicated team is always ready to connect with our clients, ensuring their financial success. At Tame Accountants, we are chartered certified accountants with a deep understanding of tax and business advisory services. So, whether you're just starting out or looking for a trusted partner to navigate complex financial waters, Tame Accountants is here for you. Don't wait, get in touch with us today and experience the difference. Okay, again, family, I just want to welcome Una again and to the Dena Now Media Empire, the, like the channel where they bring the news now na domot and all over the world because not to salon no more and uh, you know or england no more then they watch you now all over the world people and they watch this program and then we want for welcome una. and then we we'll also ask una for share the links to as many people as you can because this is a very very important topic important issues way relevant to our lives because uh of course we're talking about the university of sierra leone they talk about issues the way they affect that they, they affect all man who, wherever you belong your political opinion or whatever if the university no healthy issues they know they go the rightly they affect the beginning education uh, again una na the comments will like for welcome una all and they will go one for me kuna tell we na from musa una the watch we we really appreciate Una and then we'll go one back for me kuna share the links to as many people as soon as can as the interview they continue. Uh, Mr. Levy, thank you so much again. The then and now one for thank you for the time where you don't spare for come explain to the public because then they listen you right now all over the world and then at least you go able you be able make you don't enlighten Sierra Leoneans them a lot about this thing because many people don't understand the, the nitty-gritty of the issues the way they happen in the country so you don't help for clarify these issues so mr levy waiting now because i believe say ministry day and the ability government department like let's say for example like the office of the chief minister or other offices even the president's office then don't then are we about waiting to go on so now the university so waiting then don't do for make sure that the right thing happen. Nothing, nothing, nobody no intervene as far as I know, but I'm inclined to believe, say, they are aware because the, the, nah, the media don't set the agenda mm -hmm. with this issue. So I go, I, go, I go deny vehemently if somebody, any government minister, pretend not for notice here. They know, they know this thing is going on and I'm sure they know that this is illegal by the ministry but I don't know what's in the apple. Nobody is saying nothing. Nobody is saying nothing. But the university courts can continue for raise the issue and for make up an agenda, for appeal to public opinion, for no say this is the assault they have been subjected to. The president say he come, he one bill a legacy in education, a bill is legacy. Essentially what in this ministry has done is to throw spanner and make into that work very fine legacy the ministry basically don't make mockery of the president in legacy because this is blatant political interference into the administration of the university. We are not, the court is not arguing that it is perfect. There are teething problems. There are lapses. But there should be a constructive way of addressing those lapses. Dissolving the courts is an extrajudicial measure by the ministry because the ministry not gets such powers, especially if you look at in the context of the new legal framework, the 2021 Universities Act, nobody, no instruments, no law, no give the power to the ministry to dissolve the court. Like I say, when you dissolve the court, extension, you don't sack the chancellor. How can a minister, we appointed by the president, sack a chancellor that is appointed by the president? It's a, it's a shame. It's really a shame that this thing they happen, nobody knows the same about that. It's a shame. 
and this is an assault on higher education and this is an attempt to to politicize education it's a shame Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. James Tambalebi, for this uh, like information with the GUI and the clarifications on issues. Okay, uh, Mr. Lebi, now, like the act, because sometimes again the law, it then can get some lacunas in the laws. So in this case, for example, like we say, we don't find one set because now it's like the ministry no one uh, back down. Okay. But then at the same time, the university back Una self don't say, okay, you know what? What you they happen so is wrong, and we know they like we know they accept una they una they tell them say it's wrong. So in that case, they how how you feel say that that standoff day go be overcome so that we get smooth business for Rona the well, university. There have been a, there have been a couple of interesting developments over the, the past couple of days. Now when the ministry illegally dissolved, purportedly dissolved the, 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 the court, mm -hmm. guess what they do? They put together a committee, they handpicked people then for put together a committee, then give them terms of reference. One of those things is to organize congregation. Congregation, go to section 47 of the Universities Act. Only the chancellor can confer degrees and congregation can only happen under the watch of the court. Then go put together a committee when on the legal basis. And but as God could have it, then put together a, a, among the handpicked people a couple of very stable people in the day, including the chair. Then it's on Tuesday. Guess what it happened? Sorry, the lights don't go. Oh, okay. Well, then this, again, we meet now, on Tuesday. Okay, good. Now, yeah. Sierra Leone, light go, but you don't come back. Eh, light don't come back, or you don't do another alternative. No, I'm nah, a lantern. I'm a lantern. I stand by lantern. I get. Okay, yeah. The lights okay. don't go. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And so I much. get stand by modem. I get stand by modem. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank so, you. So, among okay. them, hand picks people in there. And mm -hmm. there are a couple of respectable people. The chair, now one paramount chief, when I mean lecture, former lecturer at Afrobe College, the chairperson mm -hmm. of the committee. Then they get Professor Malam O. Malam O, the former statistician general, when mm -hmm. a vice chancellor and principal now at Unim Tech. They meet on Tuesday. Guess what they tell the ministry? The committee say they lack le legitimacy for execute the terms of reference when they give them. So, in fact, they ask the ministry for reconstitute the university courts. They say they get legitimacy for execute their activity then the way they have the term preference. Then give the ministry one week for reconstitute the courts. This is shameful. So, but the minister and the deputy minister, we are not in the meeting. They say they travel. So, but the permanent secretary and I chair the meeting. A promise say where the political boss then come. He go, he go update them. He go report accordingly. They are to meet again next Tuesday. But Professor Malam O did not mince his words. He told the ministry, "Say you not get wrong. You have no powers to dissolve the court. Go back to the drawing board, reconstitute the court, and the court everything will fall in place." The committee where they hand nine tell the ministry that day on Tuesday. Okay. What a shame. Yeah, thank you so much. Then, uh, mm -hmm. then okay, go also, on. the office mm -hmm. of the all boards man mm -hmm. don't become sufficiently interested in the matter. You know, the of, office of all boards man, a border on administrative law and justice. Yeah, yeah. Then say, what did happen at the university fall within the ambit? Mm -hmm. Then don't talk to the ministry. Then don't reach out to the university. Now, the university registrar, the substantive registrar, where the ministry purports they don't send on leave, they don't nominate me for representing the ministry, or go represent the university to the ombudsman. So, their appointment tomorrow with them for go engage them and give your own side of the story. So, some, some interesting developments then happen. And we hope that common sense will prevail and that we will go back to the drawing board and reconstitute that court and allow the court for run the university. 
because that's not that's not that the law say nobody not get right for run university past the university court because by law that's the highest administrative decision making body okay thank you so much and again famulem this na well james tambalebi a senior lecturer or a, a lecturer a senior staff now for Bay college and uh, in like mm -hmm. again i'm mean, going talk for the university but as you know no more now because it is stand up because i don't see but who comment them and say that because you stand up you the advocate you the talk for now you know the mouthpiece you the talk for the university you the talk on these issues now that make then well some people then say unlawfully then terminate your contract and again they not get basis because why them for go down to that level they for go terminate your contract but then they will left them for another time okay so with all this yeah where they happen so whose impact you feel say this they create on learning at the university um academically so far may not create impact it and i will tell you why but administratively the university is literally shut down because in and do they appoint an acting registrar they appoint an acting finance director we don't take over but they don't get access to resources for around the university they are not signatories to the account now academically there are activities going on because you get the college administration. The, the lecture, they happen at collegiate level. Co lectures, they go on at uh, IPAM. Lectures, they go on at uh, Frobe College. Lectures, they go on at uh, Comas. So far, they not disturb it. But there are worrying signs now that it therefore affects academia. And I will tell you why. Okay. The heads of them various campus system then get a threshold with an assigned money. After that threshold day, if you lay above mm -hmm. that threshold, now the vice chancellor of assign. The vice chancellor back gets a threshold. If you go above that, now the chancellor of assign. Now then they conduct sports, then they can conduct exam, then for the college they can one conduct student union ex, um, election. The money where they need for do their activity, then they are above the threshold of the campus head. Of the DVC, the Deputy Vice Chancellor. Some of our even they above the Vice Chancellor and the Chancellor for sign. Now we don't have a Vice Chancellor and we don't have a Chancellor. Who do I get for sign? Right now there is a tension on Frobe College campus. Administration one conducts election money no day because the money they need for doing that day they are above the threshold with the head of campus for sign. The one do sports. The money they need they are above the threshold with the head of campus for sign. They, they don't put date for conduct exam. If this thing not resolved as soon as possible, it therefore creates problem for the constituent colleges because the money where they need a day above the threshold them for the head of the different campuses for able sign. It has to be signed by the vice chancellor or the chancellor according to the manual, the finance manual of the university and the finance policy. And that policy day is approved by court. Nobody not get right for change them. Pass court, sit down back and amend them. No authority pass the court. So right now, money no the 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 request from the university they come thick and fast. There is nobody to sign. So the administrative level in don't paralyze at the university level. It completely don't paralyze. Nothing is happening. Now teaching them on the go on at collegiate level. Even at that, would they approach exam? So these are worrying signs. We have to find a solution very quickly to this standoff. And the only solution is for the ministry to accept that the norm misbehave, then have to go back to the drawing board and reconstitute the court. And as I say, this is all personal. This is all an agenda underpinned by sentiment and malice, not in the best interest of the university at all. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Levy, for this interview where you allow where like you grant for make we do and then also i just want to tell you one thing say people in the watch you all over the world and right to falabar district uh people and they have are going to comment them way one uh, mohammed bailo dalaba jalo he say he really they enjoyed the interview and then he watched from a town 
way in a Falaba, inside Falaba district, we said in the call to Gulea. And then we get uh, one Mohammed Hassan Kamara instead of the watch. You not you not see who say exactly from where, but Mohammed Kamara and then mm -hmm. uh, Ahmad Usaidu and then Lamin Denke uh, in just tell you thank you. He say for talk for the university for talk the truth and for be upright. So people them um, they come and then they really they appreciate you so much for that. Okay, Mr. Lebi. So. Uh, we don't know say you wanna say this year na like una the suspecting a personal thing, but you know fin say like again, let's say the one them like and I know say you know go can't say this you no know, you know sabi people and say them party affiliation or other thing then, but you know fin say anything highly political they were na the bedrock where they try for push and try for no. the no. So what's in the adversary they try for do? Then they try for undertake so many dirty games. What they are doing, they are throwing the kitchen sink on the university. First, okay. then say corruption in at the university. Therefore, then mm -hmm. for pull all man, they investigate. We say no. The, the court can still be reconstituted. Officials are doing their job. Then if you feel say corruption, they will not investigate. The two are not mutually exclusive. You understand? Mm -hmm. The courts go, they run in business. The university, they go on. Una investigation, they go on. But you cannot come and say, for pull all man, who are investigate now. It's bullshit. Now, clear legged argument. Now, smoke screen. Now, pretext. Now, that ain't no work. Now, the non can say now, the officials of the university, now, APC people. Mm -hmm. Let's even agree. They are not APC people. Totally, I deny that. I know them. But let's even agree, say, now, APC people. Where is it in our laws that it become a crime to become a PC? Where we constitution they say there is freedom of association. There you they can't say that APC people left. Is it a crime to become a, to be an APC member? So what? University are competent people and they run them, not to partisan business. So then they try so many games, but this is all smoke screen. This is all smoke screen. They, the team is personal and they are using every option. Then so when they try this, you know work, then go to this, you know work, then go to this, you know work. And we, so, we stick to the law. We are the law with the law. watch. We are on the side of the law. Go anybody where they listen to this program, where they watch this program, and they appeal to you, go dig na internet, the universities acts of 2021. Read seven, eight, and nine, not only whole act. Section seven, eight, and nine. If you are read about convocation, congregation for give degree, go section 45, 47. Go read them. It will tell you exactly the powers of the court and would I get the power for appoint. What in basically this ministry they do is you have individuals using their power to silence people and because they're not like them. You have individuals where they fight a personal battle with people that they don't like. It's a question of, I don't like you, therefore you're not going for the under. And this is a civilized society. A university, you don't know, need to elect somebody. Is he qualified? Is he eligible? Now we know for university. You know, we don't come and say, you want to promote university, then you they, you, they, you they bring them sentimental attachment and they. This is unacceptable in the 21st century. And now because I stand up and say this, they say they contaminate the contract. It's, it's so it's, okay. If that's the price I have okay. to pay. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you so much. But also with you your issue, for example, I think say legally you get side for go seek redress, even not to the ombudsman. Is that not so? Well, I get I get many options in employment law. I get one year contract more. I get one year and a contract. They not find mm -hmm. me one thing for. For misdemeanor, they don't investigate me. They don't want to query me before they terminate me contract. So I have options. By the way, so me self get I get legal background. I read law. I not just go yeah. law school it, but I read law. Yeah. So I get so, small so the, of the law. What is the basis? Options, but I don't reach the. I don't reach mm -hmm. the. I consider first now the bigger picture, fighting this injustice where mm -hmm. the ministry they perpetrate. That is my focus right now. It's not about me. It's not about JT Levy, it's not about Tamalebi. It's about the injustice way and the perpetuate against the university. That's the bigger picture. 
and we go resist them. We go continue for talk about them, and we will call all meaning Sierra Leoneans them for help the university for raise this issue for make them a talking point for keep them at the news until we we, we able mold public opinion for push the powers that be let them understand say this is an injustice and cannot be condoned in this 21st century. Okay, uh, thank you so much again. Fambulem, this na the then and now media empire, and this na Saiku John Barry, the canto na live from the UK. And then with me, I get James Tambalebi, uh, na a senior staff na the University of Sierra Leone until recently, we then terminating contract na being the public relations officer. So na in direct, the director of public relations. Okay, director of, of public relations. So na if they explain yeah. to we about what in the go on at the university, what in the ministry don't do, we you know you know lawful. And then when I don't listen, when I don't hear it, all what in the transpire day, and then you know, so when I share these links to as many people as when I can, and we will come back after short break. Tame accountants specialize in providing a wide range of accountancy, tax and business advisory services to small and medium-sized businesses as well as individuals and private clients. We operate as an extension of your internal staff, giving you maximum flexibility by allowing you to rely on us for any of the services that we offer. Our valued clients include Startups, charting their course to success Sole traders, making their mark in the world of business Self-employed individuals, paving their own way Partnerships, building stronger futures Limited companies, ensuring financial stability Contractors, securing their financial future CIS contractors, finding financial clarity Subcontractors, thriving with our expertise. Landlords, making property management a breeze. Those looking to sell their business, unlocking potential profits. Employed individuals, finding financial peace of mind. Even hairdressers, managing their unique financial challenges. We are open, approachable, and friendly, the perfect choice for small businesses like yours. Our dedicated team is always ready to connect with our clients, ensuring their financial success. At Tame Accountants, we are chartered certified accountants with a deep understanding of tax and business advisory services. So, whether you're just starting out or looking for a trusted partner to navigate complex financial waters, Tame Accountants is here for you. Don't wait, get in touch with us today and experience the difference. Okay, uh, fumble them again. Una welcome back, and this now cycle John Barry, and we not get much time again. But uh, we we'll go allow Mr. Levy for try for wrap up, and we we'll ask again maybe one or two questions. Uh, Mr. Levy, now like for example, this you know the government said the flagship now for campus education go before now the country, and then then talk about. Uh, human capital development or something like that. So how you feel say then can behavior yeah from the government itself because you know go take you know go just single out the ministry because they know what's in the board. How you feel say this go impact that agenda day? Well I still refuse for collectively blame the government. Okay. I really want to single out the ministry. Mm -hmm. This is the ministry. I don't get no evidence for saying uh, government generally as an the ministry. Nine they do this. The helm of affairs is the minister where they abuse the office for certain personal scores. So uh, I really know one one whole in, in totality and generality, hold the government's responsible. Be that as well, it may, mm -hmm. it's it's hypocritical. For let the very ministry charge you the responsibility for supervised higher education, they do this mm -hmm. kind of thing against the backdrop of the pronouncements and um, all within the president don't do for support human capital development and for support higher education or ge education generally. This is an attempt to, to stifle 
it is a disgrace to the president in, in agenda. It's a disgrace to a legacy. So Naime could say the president must speak up if or come out and condemn this action. Because what's in the ministry to do is to make mockery of the president in agenda. The president not go down campaign on a manifesto promise. They don't deliver that promise. They don't give autonomy to the university. Then the ministry one can reverse them against them. They not go mean well. And this is the scary thing. If this is not reversed, it will be a bad precedent that will haunt higher education for decades and generations to come. This will be open to abuse by successive governments. We will reach a point when governments will come and say, today they can't determine whether they become HOD. Then we appoint heads of departments because we don't set a bad precedent. We don't allow for people and for can interfere in the running of the university where you have no business. Other government will come tomorrow and say, when I will not allow this for happen, now we take them to another level. This is the scary thing. And we don't decide for the academics. We mean now we don't decide for spending life. There are people who are researching and getting promotions and the, the ultimate and for be a professor. And for be head of the university, you have to be a professor. What if tomorrow another government come and come with a non-academic and say, would they appoint them for around the university? What will you say? Where we sit down, we allow this kind of injustice for, for go on. This is the scary thing. It will be open to abuse and a bad precedent. But they're not a thing can that way. They. Just because they're not like one thing, they're not mindset bad precedent, even if it haunts the university system for years and generations and decades to come. It's a shame. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Levy and uh, Mohammed Hassan Kamara. Uh, he say from Lunshar, he tell you thank you for what you don't do for demystify the issues them yeah we go on because like Sierra Leone is not everybody able for understand like, especially with the just area and the news. So you find way people in the host you then you clarify the issues. So thank you so much, Mohamed Hassan, for your comment. And we really appreciate you. And then also they ask you for share the links to as many people as you can come. So we don't get much time, Mr. Levy. So what in the message where you want for lefty Sierra Leoneans and the government of Sierra Leone? So this is not about an individual. It is not about Professor Lawrence Kamara. It is not about Professor Mohamed Samai. It is not about Mrs. Olive Barry, the registrar of the university. This is about the University of Sierra Leone, one of the public universities of Sierra Leone. In fact, arguably the leading university in Sierra Leone. You did not see last year how the USL belong in, in the world university ranking, how we don't score high for a, for, for a very long time. So it means gains have taken place. What they want to do is to reverse those gains with the appeal for let people and put aside their ego. This is not about whether you like this policy or not. This is about what the law say about eligibility for all this position. Let common sense prevail. Let sentiment back down. Let the rule of law and due process prevail. This is my last comment. Okay, again, let the rule of law prevail. That now the last word we, uh, Mr. James Tambalebi, left with Una. So like he left to Sierra Leoneans again for me to stand up for the echo these words. Because I think say now this is the Ambog Salon because we know like if again people them allow somebody just maybe for personal issues look how you say they disband something and then you set a bad precedent and then like he rightly say tomorrow tomorrow somebody else back or the government they come we say okay we say they do the same thing and one thing way i want left now now it not have the same things we go do what's not yeah exactly so what you would try for say here is this let people then disconnect politics especially when it come to running institutions them like Obama been tell we say uh, Africa we not just strong institutions that now we get uh, now we need so for ensure that we maintain or we 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 nurture strong institutions then now then kind of tea, I will not for the allow if the law the law the way we clear as to how an institution for run nobody know for can override that 
So now we that at the left now, and then I tell you now, thank you. And Mr. Levy, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for hosting me. Thanks to your audience, your viewers. The pleasure is mine. The struggle continues. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, fumble them. This is now how they end the program. And this is now the Dena Now Media Empire. And then I am Psycho John Barry, live from the UK. Then I, thank, I tell you all thank you. Una good night. <laughs>